Hi everyone, uh, my name is Abzal Hassan. I um, found the software team of Samsung Semiconductor India Research. Uh, me and my colleague Priya Dixit uh, present today on this topic Enhancing System Security by Integrating Zafir Bootloader and MCU Boot. So in today's agenda, we present the importance of system security in Zafir Bootloader. System architecture of Zafir, integration process of Zafir bootloader and MCU boot, secure boot process of proposed bootloader, firmware update process of proposed bootloader, rollback protection and bootloader recovery, threat model, limitations and challenges along with the future development. In today's digital landscape, system security is of paramount importance. To bolster the protection of embedded systems, the integration of the Zafir bootloader and MC boot emerges as a promising solution. The Zafir bootloader and open source, scalable, and secure bootloader provide a robust foundation for system bootup. It incorporates advanced features such as secure boot, digital signatures, verification, and measured boot ensuring the integrity and authenticity of critical components during the startup process. By integrating the Fire Bootloader with MCU Boot, a highly flexible and customizable firmware update framework, system security reaches new heights. MCU Boot offers secure firmware updates utilizing cryptographic mechanisms and authentication protocol to safeguard against unauthorized modifications. This integration empowers embedded systems with a comprehensive security framework. The Zafir bootloader establishes a trusted chain of execution, verifying the authenticity of each component through digital signatures. Furthermore, MC boot ensures secure firmware update, mitigating the risk of vulnerabilities and enhancing resilience against evolving threats. Together, the Zafir bootloader and MCU boot amalgamate the power of secure boot and robust firmware update, fortifying system security and protecting against malicious attacks. This integration is a significant stride towards safeguarding embedded systems in diverse domains such as IoT, industrial automation, and automotive, where security is of paramount concern. Enhance the system security by embracing the integration of the Zafir bootloader and MCU boot, uh, ensuring a resilient foundation for secure and trusted operations. Next, we'll discuss about the fire actors system architecture. So now in this slide, we'll discuss about the fire system architecture along with its security components. A real-time operating system, Zafir, stands out as a robust and versatile platform for embedded applications. Its system architecture not only enables real-time responsiveness but also prioritizes security to protect against emerging threats. At the core of Zafir's architecture is a modular microkernel design. The lightweight approach allows for efficient resource utilization, enabling the real-time operating system to run on a wide range of devices from resource-constrained microcontroller to more powerful processors. The modularity also promotes code reusability, flexibility, and flex facilitating customization to suit uh, specific application requirements. The Fire Real-Time Operating System incorporates several security features to fortify system resilience. It embraces the principle of defense in depth by implementing security mechanisms at multiple levels. This includes secure boot, encrypted communication, access control, and memory protection. Secure boot ensures the integrity and authenticity of systems, firmware, and software components during the boot process. It employs digital signatures to verify the authenticity of these components, safeguarding against tampering and unauthorized modification. To protect data in transit, the Fire Real-Time Operating System offers various communication protocols with built-in encryption capabilities, such as transport layer security. This ensures the confidentiality and integrity of sensitive information exchange between devices or network. 
access control mechanism impose permissions and restrictions limiting the actions and privileges of different software companies and users by employing rule based access control and other access management strategies the fire real time operating system mitigates the risk of unauthorized access and potential breaches memory protection mechanisms such as memory segmentation and other isolation techniques prevent unauthorized access or corruption of critical data and code improving the system security posture the system architecture of sapphire atlas combines scalability flexibility and a robust security frame it, its modular design promote uh, resource efficiency and customization while security features like secure boot encrypted communication at access control and memory protection mitigate risk and safeguard against threats embracing the fire real time operating system empowers embedded system with a reliable foundation ensuring both real time performance and robust security in a rapidly evolving digital landscape in this slide we'll discuss about importance of system security in embedded world in today's interconnected world embedded systems plays a vital role in powering critical infrastructure such as industrial control systems iot devices and automotive systems with this increasing reliance ensuring robust system security becomes paramount embedded systems control essential operation monitor sensitive data and manage critical function without proper security measures these system are susceptible to cyber threats including data breaches unauthorized access and malicious attacks the consequences can be devastating leading to operational disruptions financial losses and compromise of user safety system security in embedded systems is crucial for several reasons Firstly, it safeguards the confidentiality and integrity of sensitive data. Industries handling financial transactions, personal information, or intellectual property must pre must prevent unauthorized access and protect against data breaches to maintain trust and regularity compliance. Secondly, system security ensures the availability and reliability of embedded systems. Industries relying on real-time operations, such as manufacturing or healthcare, cannot afford system failures or disruption. By implementing robust security measures, these systems remain resilient against attacks and maintain uninterrupted functionality. Furthermore, embedded systems operate within interconnected environments, making them potential entry points for broader network attacks. Strengthening system security helps prevent compromised embedded devices from being used as gateways to infiltrate larger networks, thus protecting the integrity of entire ecosystem. Additionally, ensuring system security in embedded devices enhances user trust and confidence, and users expect these devices to be secure, whether it's a smart home device, a medical implant, or a vacuum. Robust security measures inspire confidence and reduce concerns regarding privacy, safety, and the potential misuse of personal information. System security in embedded system is essential for regulatory compliance. Various industries must adhere to strict standards and regulation concerning data protection and system security. Maintaining these requirements not only avoids legal consequences but also demonstrates a commitment to maintaining the highest standards of security and reliability. Security in embedded system is of utmost importance to protect critical infrastructure, sensitive data, and user trust. By implementing robust security measures such as secure boot, encryption, access control, and continuous monitoring, embedded systems can withstand evolving cyber threats, ensuring the integrity, availability, and reliability of essential operations. In today's interconnected world. In this slide, we'll discuss about concept of integrating the fire bootloader and MCU. Integrating these fire bootloader with MCU boot presents a powerful concept to enhance firmware update security. 
By combining the strengths of these two components, the system gains a comprehensive solution for secure and reliable firmware updates. There's a fire boot loader known for its scalability and security features, establishes a trusted boot process, ensuring the integrity of critical components during startup. It incorporates secure boot mechanism, digital signature verification, and measured boot, establishing a chain of trust and safeguarding against tampering and unauthorized modification. On the other hand, MC Boot pro provides a flexible and customizable framework for secure firmware updates. It utilizes cryptographic techniques, authentication protocols, and secure communication channels to ensure that only authorized and verified firmware updates are applied. The integration of the Fire Boot Loader and MC Boot combines the benefit of secure boot with robust firmware update mechanics. It allows for seamless secure and efficient updates of firmware on embedded devices, mitigating the risk of vulnerabilities and ensuring system resilience against evolving threats. With this concept, embedded system can confidently embrace secure firmware updates, protecting against unauthorized modification, maintaining system integrity and delivering enhanced functionality to users. Integrating the Fire Boot Loader and MCU Boot presents a compelling concept that enhances firmware update security. It combines the trusted boot process of the Fire Boot Loader with the secure update capabilities of MCU Boot, uh, providing a powerful solution for maintaining the integrity and security of embedded system through reliable and secure firmware updates. In the next sections, we'll discuss about the, the Fire Boot Loader and MCU Boot individually. So in this slide, we'll discuss about some the Fire Boot Loader features. So it's famous for its lightweight design. It has secure booting feature. It has firmware update support and cryptographic verification. Flexible configuration, error handling and recovery capability. Compatibility with the the Fire Outriders and its integration. In this slide, we'll discuss about the Fire Boot Loader Bootstrap. As we know, the, the Fire Boot Loader is responsible for initializing the system and loading the main application into memory on the Firebase devices. So we can discuss about the high level overview of the Fire Boot Loader's boot flow. So from the power on reset, when the device is powered on or reset the processor begin executing code from a predefined memory address, typically the boot loader's entry point. Then we will move on to the bootloader initialization. The bootloader code initializes essential hardware components such as clocks, memory and peripherals required for the device's operation. Then bootloader configuration. The bootloader may have parameters such as boot delay, boot source selection or communication interface. It reads this communication option either from a dedicated configuration area in uh, non-volatile memory for example dash or through other screens to determine the boot behavior. Then we have the boot source selection. The boot loader determines the source from which to load the main application. The source can vary based on the system design and configuration but common options include external flash memory, internal flash memory or an external storage device like an SD card or a network interface. Then we move on to the loading of the application. The boot loader reads the main application image from the selected boot source. It typically verifies the integrity and authenticity of the image using cryptographic signatures or checksums to ensure that the application had been tampered with or any overwritten thing has happened. Optional authentication is also possible if the main application image is signed with a digital signature, the bootloader may perform additional authentication steps. This involves verification the signature against a trusted key or to certificate to ensure that the application is authentic and hasn't been modified. Next, we have the main application execution. Once the bootloader has successfully loaded and authenticated the main application, it transfers control to the application's entry point. The main application then begins its execution, taking over the device's functionality. 
has bootloader update as an option in some cases the bootloader itself may be updatable if an updated bootloader is available the main application can initiate the update process by requesting the new bootloader image or updating a bootloader in memory it's important to note that the boot flow of the Zafire bootloader can vary depending upon the configuration and customization implemented by the device manufacturer or system developer. These steps outlined above provide a general understanding of the typical boot flow for Zafire based system. Moving on to the MCU boot, uh, we'll discuss in this slide some of the features of the MCU boot. It has secure boot firmware update uh, cryptographic verification better than the Zafire bootloader flexible configuration error handling and recovery tamper resistance and compatibility and integration possibilities with other microprocessor microcontrollers and the RTOs like the Zafire RTOs I will discuss about MCU boot uh, boot flow the MC boot is an open source bootloader specifically designed for microcontrollers and is often used in Zafire based systems. Uh, so the high level overview of boot flow of MCU boot is from the power on or reset. When the MCU is power on or reset, the MCU bootloader start executing from a predefined memory address, typically the bootloader's entry point. Then it jumps to the bootloader initialization. MC boot initializes essential hardware components such as clock, memories, peripheral required for the bootloader's operation. Then it goes for bootloader source selection. MC boot determines the source from which to load the main application. This can be based on predefined configuration options or runtime checks depending upon how the system is configured. Then it goes for the primary slot execution. MC boot initially boosts the primary ap application slot, assuming it contains a valid and authenticated application image. Then it goes for the image validation. MC boot validates the image in the primary application slot using cryptographic signatures or checksum. It verifies the integrity and authenticity of the image to ensure it hasn't been tampered with. Then it's based on the result of the image validation and C boot determines the boot decision. If the primary application image is valid and authenticated, MC boot transfer control to the primary application entry point and the application begin executing. If the application image is invalid or not present, MC boot falls back to the secondary application slot. The secondary we will discuss about the secondary slot execution. If the primary slot is invalid or doesn't contain a valid application image, MCU boots the secondary application slot. Image swap is an optional feature. If the secondary slot contains a valid and authenticated application image, MCU boot can perform an image swap to make the secondary slot the new primary slot. This allows seamless and atomic updates of the application. This is, is there is an optional image update feature as well. MCU boot provides functionality to update the application image in either the primary or secondary slot. The update process can be initiated by the main application or through external means such as over the air update mechanism. So in this case, it's important to note that the MCU boot flow is highly configurable and customizable, allowing for various strategies in terms of image storage security features and update mechanism the boot flow described just provides a general understanding of the typical boot flow in MCU boot but um, actual implementation detail may vary depending upon the MC specific MCU or platform and the configuration chosen for the MCU boot flow. so in this slide we'll discuss about the integration process of the fire boot loader and MCU Integrating the Zafire bootloader with MCU boot involves configuring and building both components to work together seamlessly. So, uh, as to step uh, by step guide to help you with the integration process, first we have to set up the development environment, install the required development tools, 
including the fire and MCO board. Set up the necessary build system such as CMake to compile the bootloader and the fire application. Next step is to configure the Zafire bootloader. Identify the specific Zafire bootloader configuration you want to use, such as the one provided by Zafire's samples bootloader directory. Customize the bootloader uh, configuration according to your specific requirements. This may include selecting the appropriate boot source, defining slot sizes, enabling secure boot features configuring communication interfaces and more. Integrate MCU boot with the fan. Ensure that MCU boot is installed and available in your development environment. Configure MCU boot integration in the fire boot loader configuration file. This typically involves defining the MCU boot library part. Specific the required MCU boot APIs and configuring the slot layout. Next step is the integration process of the fire bootloader and MC boot is building the bootloader and the fire application. Build the fire bootloader using the fire build system. This will compile the bootloader code and generate the bootloader image file. Build the fire application that you want to boot using the bootloader, ensuring that the application will is built with the necessary MC boot integration and may require configuration option. Slash the bootloader in the fire application. Slash the compiled bootloader image to the appropriate memory location on your target. The flashing process may vary depending upon your specific hardware and tools. Slash the fire application image, ensuring that it is placed in the appropriate memory location. According to this slot layout, define the bootloader configuration. Verify the integration. Power on or reset the device to observe the boot process. Ensure that the bootloader executes successfully. Verify if is a fire application image and transpose control to the application in brief. Next step and the last step is to test and iterate. Validate the integrated the fire bootloader and MC boot as functioning as expected. Perform tests to verify secure boot functionality. Image updates and other desired feature. Iterate on the integration and configuration as needed based on your specific requirements and feedback from testing. You can see some code snippet in the slides as well. How to proceed with the integration process? We have to develop both support package for our board as for our own company. In this slide, we can see a basic bootloader flowchart. So, as we know, as the bootloader initiates, the initialization of hardware starts and it loads user config data from bootloader customizable area and configure clocks, peripherals, and memory. If any update is required, then the boot pin got asserted and it can go for the uh, firmware update. Otherwise, it will check if the user app is valid or not through checksum or through some cryptographic verification and then it can go for direct boot or through the timeout which we call as the boot time. So in this slide, we'll discuss about the benefits of integrating the fire boot loader and MCU boot. Integrating the Zafire bootloader with MCU boot brings several benefits to the development and deployment of embedded system. Here are some advantages of combining these two components. First advantage is secure boot. MCU boot provides sober security features such as cryptographic image authentication and secure boot capabilities. By integrating MCU boot with the Zafire bootloader, you can enhance the security of the system by ensuring that only trusted and authenticated firmware images are executed. Next advantage is dual image slots. MCU Boot's dual image slot strategy allows for seamless firmware updates and reliable fallback mechanism. By integrating this feature into the Zafire bootloader, you gain the ability to perform safe and atomic image swap, ensuring that your device can always boot into a known boot firmware image. Next advantage is efficient image updates. MCU boot supports 
in place image updates allowing you to update the firmware without requiring a full chip erase this results in faster and more efficient updates preserving critical data and configuration settings during the update process next advantage is over the air updates by integrating mcu boot with the fire boot loader you can leverage the over the air update mechanism to remotely update and manage firmware on your devices this enable convenient and efficient firmware updates over wireless network reducing maintenance costs and improving device management flexibility and portability improves by this integration and uh, mc boots hardware abstraction layer allows for easy porting of different microcontroller platform while the fires smaller and configurable architecture provides flexibility to adapt to various use cases next advantage is open source and community support Boot Zafire and MC Boot are open source projects with active community. Integrating these components allow you to leverage the collective knowledge, expertise, and support from the developer community, ensuring ongoing maintenance, bug fixes, and security updates. Another advantage of this integration is extensibility and customization. Integrating Sapphire Bootloader with MCU Boot provides a foundation for extensibility and customization. You can build upon the bootloader stack to add custom features, tailor the security mechanisms to your specific requirements, and integrate additional functionality based on your application needs. By integrating the Sapphire Bootloader with MCU Boot, you can benefit from a powerful and secure bootloader solution. With enhanced update capabilities, improve security and the flexibility to adapt to different hardware platform and development scenarios. So now I'll pass you over to my colleague Priya Dixit to take you further in this session. Thanks, Abzal. Hello, everyone. My name is Priya Dixit and I work as a staff engineer at Samsung Semiconductor India Research. I will continue from secure booting in Zephyr RTOS. We will first understand PKI, that is a public key infrastructure and digital signatures to understand secure boot and to get the idea about secure booting. Public key infrastructure uh, is used to ensure the authenticity and uh, the integrity of systems boot sequence using cryptographic keys. These cryptographic keys uh, are used in algorithm to encrypt and decrypt data or for signing and ver verifying, which can be asymmetric or symmetric. Here in symmetric exceptions, we use a single key uh, to encrypt and decrypt data, while in asymmetric encryption, we use uh, two different keys to encrypt and decrypt. For implementing secure boot, we preferably use asymmetric cryptography that has two types of uh, keys private key and public key, as the key management is easy in this case. So here the private key is kept secret and is securely held by the trusted system, whereas the public key is derived from the pri uh, private key that is distributed. Now let's talk about digital signature. So a digital signature is a mechanism that is used to verify the authenticity of software using cryptographic keys. For secure boot, the digital signature is created uh, by using a private key that is responsible for signing the software and the digital signature is then verified using the corresponding public key, uh, which is typically embedded into the system's firmware or is securely uh, stored in a hardware component such as TPM. So secure boot is a mechanism where we verify the digital signature of bootloader and OS before executing. So when the part of the system is signed using a private key, the corresponding public key is used to verify the signature. And if this pro uh, verification process succeeds, this will ensure that the content of the file has not been modified since it was signed. This way, using cryptographic keys and digital signature, we establish a chain of trust ensuring like the boot is uh, secured. Also, uh, this ensures that the uh, hardware is trusted and authorized with software components 
which help in protecting against unauthorized uh, unauthorized uh, modifications and forms of foundation for establishing a secure environment. In the case of firmware that initiate the boot process, uh, using private key, we sign the cryptographic hash of the firmware and bootloader that will de generate digital signatures. So as the boot progresses, the firmware verifies the digital signature of the component it loads against the public key that is stored in the firmware. The public keys are pre-installed in the system. If the digital uh, signatures are valid, then the boot process will continue. Uh, but if the uh, digital signature is not valid, uh, the firmware uh, halts the boot process signaling that something is fishy. Then the verified bootloader will initialize the operating system. Here as well, we uh, the digital signal, uh, signature of OS is verified. And if it is secure, then it is allowed to proceed. Otherwise, the boot process is halted. So when secure boot is enabled, the firmware will verify the digital signature of each of the executable file uh, from the firmware to bootloader, then to operating system before allowing them to run. And this will guarantee that the executables are from trusted source and has not been modified. Here we see a term have, uh, which means high assurance boot library. And this is a secure boot library for IMX processors that are designed to protect the system against uh, various forms of attacks. This can be uh, done by establishing a chain of trust from initial power on of the system uh, to the operating system execution ensuring that each component loaded during the boot process is cryptographically signed and has not been modified. This is an example of the system which ensures that uh, the system start up securely and only runs uh, authorized and verified software components providing a foundation of trust. In secure boot, the first stage, uh, is pro first stage bootloader is programmed into a uh, non-writable storage location on the device. The first stage bootloader then calculate the hash value of the second stage bootloader and verify it against the stored hash value for the bootloader. Similarly, depending on the hierarchy, for example, if we have two stage bootloader, uh, then we will repeat this process and verify this in the same way. Then we will verify if the operating system uh, is working or is valid and all the application uh, in the sequence are valid. So here in chain, we validate each layer and once uh, it is trusted, we proceed to validate the next layer in the chain. We will now check how secure boot is implemented in MCU boot. So Zephyr RTOS is PSA certified with trusted firmware M implement implementation that is based on root of trust architecture. And there are TFM APIs that we can use directly uh, in integration of Zephyr after TFM integration. Also, there is a choice among three isolation levels based on the boundary rigidness between a secure and non-secure region. Along with this, Zephyr provide uh, the support for trusted execution environment, TEE using TPM. And uh, here TPM is a trusted platform module. That is a hardware security module that provide storage uh, of cryptographic keys and other uh, security related data to verify the boot related informations. In MCU boot, the binary image uh, is suffixed with TLV pair that is type length value pairs. This is where we store the information about how the image is signed. Also here we can add metadata for uh, custom information that we would like to add to an image. Here we can see that the hash key value is defined. And for example, here we are using 0x02 as the public key. Uh, so based on the configurations we choose, the security of MCU boot will get affected. For example, uh, we can use SHA-256 based uh, validation to uh, check for image corruption. There are many macros available to choose from the digital signatures like config boot signature type RSA and config boot signature type ECDSA P256. 
which will control the type of signature uh, the MCU boot uses to verify the image. And if we do not define any signature algorithm, uh, then the image is not protected against the intentional modification, but it will just act as a checksum preventing a corrupted image from booting. Also, there is one macro config boot uh, validate slot that ensures that uh, MCU boot validates the signature of the image on every boot. Uh, although this feature makes the booting process a bit lengthy, but it always verifies the uh, that the running image is trusted. With this secure boot process in place, the security check uh, during reboot will identify the unauthorized executables and uh, prevent it from running further. And in background, it may initiate remedial actions. Uh, the firmware upgrade process in Zephyr RTOS is secure procedure that ensures the installation of uh, updated firmware on the target device uh, by writing the new image to the flash and replacing the previous image. So whenever some new features are added to the firmware or we do any bug fixes, then to update the system with those changes, we do a firmware upgrade by preparing a new firmware image. Uh, so on a regular interval, we can check if new firmware update is available for the device or not. Uh, here we may use versioning to check if any higher version image for the firmware update is available. If the new firmware image uh, is available, then we can proceed to download it securely or uh, we can uh, in regular interval uh, schedule the recheck to, the, uh, to check if any higher version image has come. So this new feature uh, uh, this new firmware image is then securely downloaded to the target device through interfaces like uh, UART or SD card or uh, via cloud. We can download the new firmware image to some partition or uh, to some partition in the target device. We will then verify the firmware using digital signatures or checksum to ensure that it has not been corrupted uh, during transfer before applying the update. So here also the firmware is signed using private key and uh, verification is done by public key uh, as in case of secure boot. So the fire artos leverage MCU boot to do firmware update. Here MCU boot will conduct further verification of image and perform integrity checks. And if the new firmware images, uh, image passes these checks, then MCU boot safely updates the image uh, guaranteeing a secure and reliable firmware upgrade. And if this fails, we may uh, try to initiate uh, the upgrade again uh, because there might be some issues with download or uh, there may be some issue that was um, there, but it might have been solved now. So once the device is authenticated, uh, we can download the image to the secondary slot uh, of the flash from where it will start installing the fresh firmware upgrade. So there are many uh, direct APIs we can call. Uh, for example, a call to boot request upgrade will perform firmware upgrade on the next reboot. Let us now talk about rollback protection and the advantages it offers. So rollback protection uh, is used to perform um, the upgrades in a fault tolerant manner and it is also used to recover the system uh, if a bad firmware image is installed. So this is an essential security feature provided by the Zephyr RTOS to ensure that once the device has been upgraded to a specific version, it cannot be reverted to the previous version that is less secure. So Zephyr RTOS uh, implements rollback protection via MCU boot which includes a firmware image storage mechanism. Here we maintain the record of the firmware image versions we have installed. Uh, along with this, uh, their associated metadata we also record. So when performing the firmware upgrade, uh, the MCU boot checks the version and metadata of the currently installed firmware. And uh, if the incoming firmware image is older or has less secure metadata, then we reject that update and uh, this will prevent the rollback. There is a macro config boot upgrade only that uh, controls how upgrades are performed. So if this macro is unset, MCU boot uses a swapping algorithm to exchange the new upgraded image with the old image, allowing an easy revert to the system 
if the uh, if the image is not booting and if this macro is enabled the image will override the old image and if the new image does not boot there is no fallback image so as we see here the major steps remain same for the firmware upgrade process but the rollback protection provides uh, an additional benefit of switching to the previous secure firmware image in case the uh, firmware uh, the new firmware that is downloaded is not working properly so rollback protection in zephyr artos guarantees that the device will only run on the latest and more secure firmware versions bootloader recovery in the events of bootloader corruption or failure the fire artos offers a method uh, to restore or recover uh, ensuring a continued operation of the device so bootloader recovery uh, process uses a secondary bootloader or dedicated recovery mode uh, that allows the device to boot again so the fire uh, artos provides tools such as dfu uh, that is device firmware upgrade and swd that is serial wire debug interface that helps in refreshing the bootloader firmware or performing other recovery procedures to restore the device boot functionality so uh, depending on specific implementation there are various uh, mechanism to uh, recover from the failure including the options such as for uh, falling back to the known image uh, or uh, restoring the bootloader to a default or a factory state uh, initiating a firmware update using the trusted and validated image or reconfiguring the bootloader settings or parameters a threat model help us in identifying potential adversaries by analyzing different uh, threat scenarios we can develop a effective security measure common threats include unauthorized access uh, insider threats from individuals uh, with privilege access and uh, we can have the firmware level attacks the supply chain attacks physical tampering uh, and denial of service attacks considering these threats uh, prior help us to prioritize security efforts and implement appropriate measures for enhancing the overall system security so following are the best practices that can be used for integrating secure zephyr bootloader and mcu boot into the system understand the requirement for integration process and optimal performance uh, develop a secure boot architecture that incorporates the zephyr bootloader and mcu boot using a uh, secure stage uh, secure boot stages like uh, using cryptographic signatures a uh, key management and secure storage of firmware images and verification data implement a uh, secure firmware transfer by using secure channels and protocols for transferring firmware image from the sources to the target device as discussed in the previous slides and develop a secure mechanism for updating firmware implement a uh, firmware verification and authentication mechanism within the bootloader implement firmware verification and then we can uh, also deploy the error handling last is to validate uh, thoroughly the test of integration of uh, zephyr bootloader and mcu boot uh, by doing uh, rigorous testing uh, to ensure that the boot process securely enabling firmware updates rollback protections and overall system security future development so following are the some of the future scopes for integrating the fire bootloader and mcu boot in terms of system security advancement of hardware security uh, like integration of secure elements or trusted execution environments directly into the microcontroller cryptographic uh, algorithms may evolve ensuring stronger encryption machine learning and artificial intelligence can be used to identify threats and may provide advanced protection solutions there can be an enhancement in the security of ot updates using the macro uh, using some macros over a more secure channel and providing additional uh, verification mechanism Uh, with growing concerns over data privacy 
uh, we may include a stronger data protection methods in future. Uh, future developments may involve uh, real-time monitoring by providing the timely alerts and responses to the security events. In the future, we may provide tools, guidelines, and best practices that promote uh, secure system design and development. Uh, thank you for attending the presentation. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.